Hi everyone, I am Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted, the video interview series that puts you uh, in touch with the industry's top minds. Today I have Allison Athey, Volvo Trucks North America, product marketing manager. Allison, thanks for taking the time. Uh, how are you doing over there? How's the work from home transition going? Yeah, the, the work from home transition is, is going pretty good. Uh, you know, starting, finding a, a good way to handle it, a good schedule to stick to. It hasn't been as, as hard as I thought it would be, actually. Right, yeah, same here. It gives me a good chance to grow my wizard beard, so I was excited about this. <laughs> uh, today we are talking about uh, driver comfort, right? Best practices for drivers, how to keep your drivers comfortable. They're doing a heck of a job out there on the road while a lot of the country is staying at home, sheltering in place. We want to make sure that fleets know how to support the drivers, keep them comfortable, keep them safe, keep them healthy. And so that's what we're talking about today. So I'll just kind of kick over the first question. Let's start with the big one, cleaning, right? How easy is it to clean the truck interior and what are the biggest, you know, the biggest tips and, and cleaning uh, points that, that will keep these fleets drivers safe? Yeah, that, that, that's a really good question and, and something we're getting asked more and more in recent days. So cleaning uh, and cleanability of the truck is actually something that's always pulled. When we go out, we talk to truck drivers, see what their concerns are. It's something that's always been one of their top concerns, but it, really usually gets overlooked right because it's not exciting it's it's not something that you want to go talk about normally but because of that because it's always so important to the drivers the cabs are designed uh from from the the ground up basically to be very easy to clean it's something that's taken into account from the beginning so for example all of like the high touch areas the steering wheel you know the driver stalks the driver controls the handles all of that they're really made out of material that's really meant to be touched and meant to be clean and taken care of like that. So, so that's a really good thing. And on top of that, you'll also notice like in recent years, one of the requests we always had was to make uh, a removable mattress cover. So for our client bunks, you can actually take off the mattress cover and wash it and things like that. And when you're talking about cleaning a truck, you have to consider all of the surface, the material of what you're cleaning to make sure you're picking uh, the right most effective cleaning product as well. Uh, one, of the, one of the best things that I hear about cleaning a truck was it was an old complaint. You'd grab a paper towel, you'd spray it down with whatever, and you'd, you'd wipe it over the surface, and the surface um, had too much texture and it would tear up the paper towel. Uh, so right. thing, things like that when you do design a cab of a truck. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, and it's amazing how much, I mean, I'm sure truck drivers know it way, uh, and fleets know it way better than I do. But even now, when I when I get to leave the house to like run to the store once every two weeks, just how aware I am of the door handle, the steering wheel, all the different things that I'm touching in the car that I have to wipe down again when I get home. And with with fleets and truck driver, fleet truck drivers uh, interacting with so many different people, so many deliveries over this the course of this, that's totally definitely important. Yeah, and and another thing that's kind of interesting is is most uh, most trucks and even in us we have. We've designed a place where, hey, here's where you want to put the paper towels because all truck drivers have paper towels. It's it's part of depending on what they're doing, they're going to need it for one thing or another. So so you even got spaces like that where there it's already set up to hold that item. For sure, for sure, very cool. So let's kind of back up now. And uh, safety is of course top of mind, but also they're out there. <laughs> Freight demand and the need for these things are is increasing. Um, keeping them comfortable while they're operating the equipment. Uh, from your experience in talking with, with customers and fleets, what are the most common driver discomfort complaints? Okay, so the, the top driver discomfort complaints, like I mentioned, you know, we're always out there polling the drivers. We have truck stop surveys. We're having clinics. We're always talking to them. Um, I'm out talking to our customers, our dealers. We're hearing what they're thinking. So I break it down into two, two environments. And one, I look at the driving environment, and one, I look at the living environment. And when I talk about driver discomfort complaints, there's things that are you can do with the truck design, we can do with our truck technology, and there's things you can't address. So I'm going to address the areas that we can do something about with our trucks. Sure. The first, let's talk about the living. Uh, I always enjoy that the most. Getting a good night's sleep. That is one of the, the top complaints, no matter what. Um, and so a lot of things factor into getting a good night's sleep. It's not just having a comfortable mattress. It's making sure you have enough space so you're not sleeping up against the wall, because that's really uncomfortable. It's making sure that you have um, a good way to black out the, the light, to prevent the light from coming in. It's making sure that 
the uh, the heating and cooling, the HVAC works really well in the sleeper compartment because the last thing anybody wants is to wake up covered in sweat or freezing. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that plays into getting a good night's rest. Another one that I think about is the storage. So of course, when you're out on the road um, for many nights in a row, you, you're gonna need a place to put your stuff. And this, this actually is more important considering the current situation than ever before. Because now, of course, it's not just putting your stuff, but it's putting food, it's putting clothes, it's having a refrigerator to keep, keep your food cold because now more drivers are wanting to maybe take their meals in the cab or they're being forced to take their meals in the cab when they maybe wouldn't have before. So it's, it's having the ability to store all that stuff. Um, even on a traditional long, long haul route, depending on where you are um, in the hours of the, the truck stops, you may not be able to go in and grab food when, when you come in. It might not be open. Um, not everything is still is 24 hours a day. So those are all things to consider. So the storage and the spaciousness, they kind of balance out because nobody wants to be cramped either in a, in a tiny sleeper. Um, and then finally, like we already talked about, cleanability. It's been it's always on the top of the list, but we never never really talk about it too much. Um, and, and it's not just about the current situation. Cleanability, if you think about it, drivers are, are really in a unique situation. Their living and working environments are right on top of each other. They are literally working about three feet from where they sleep right. in cases. So they're getting in and out of the truck. Think like right now, the weather, it's snow and rainy and nasty. You get out, you're in a gravel parking lot, you track in all of this dirt sure. as well. So the ability to clean makes a really big difference to them because nobody wants to have dirt getting in their bed and in that area. Right, no, for sure. And I love the point about getting a full night's sleep too. I mean, that's not only is that a comfort thing, just a health thing too, right? It helps keep you, keep you going there. Um, okay, so uh, we've talked about a lot, a lot about that. So then on the flip side, uh, you know, drivers let you know when they're not happy about stuff, right? So how have you heard these discomfort, uh, these discomfort issues from drivers impact a fleet's uh, driver retention, recruitment, that kind of thing? Yeah, it, it absolutely has a big impact on their, their driver uh, recruitment and retention. So what we've seen, and this is a long-term trend, is that drivers, um, can think they care about more than just pay. And the fleets are taking that into mind. So that as they're, the fleets are looking to recruit more drivers, they're looking at higher spec trucks overall to keep those drivers happy. Right. And, but when you think about it, you know, when you have a higher spec truck with more features, the fleets are paying more for the truck, but it actually becomes a, a win-win situation is, is kind of what I would say, because as you're getting that new technology, there's new ways that you can analyze how the trucks are performing you can fix them now with over-the-air programming much more quickly than ever before. So the fleet is getting a benefit that helps their bottom line and the drivers are getting all these new comfort features as well. And when you look at that, like buying a new truck, uh, a new Volvo, we have the ergonomically designed dash, the driving environment, all of that plays in to those drivers really being much more comfortable. And, and it gets interesting because when you look at driver comfort, it's not just getting a good night's rest. It's, the ease of driving a truck. Um, this is a really big one that gets overlooked. For example, automated manual transmissions. 10 years ago, you know, it, it wasn't really a popular thing. Down the road now, it's in most everything that we sell at Volvo has an automated manual transmission, and that's the same over the entire trucking industry. Almost everything has an automated manual. Right. So making the driver's life easier, and that we've seen definitely makes it easier to train them. It's, it reduces the training time and it makes it easier to retain them and it makes it easier to get new drivers as well. Right. So we've even seen, we've even seen um, so many drivers, what is it, 80% of the drivers have body pain. Right. I, I've experienced it myself, I was driving in some uh, really windy conditions and you're just a little tensed up trying to hold the truck on the road, especially out in the Midwest, it gets really windy. And the next day you're just sore all over your shoulders. So we, we've come out with Volvo Dynamic Steering it makes the steering force 80% uh, less. And that makes a big difference over time as well. So there's all of these features trying to even just make their, their driving experience that much better. So you can't think of it like, like sleeping comfort, living comfort, it's a, the holistic picture as well. For sure, because the steering um, technology then it saves on the safety too. So the equipment safety, driver safety is a huge Absolutely. one too. The comfort benefit uh, is well, great. That's, that, that's a, a, an interesting thought. We've also seen that safety, it's, Safety is not specifically driver comfort, 
but it's an emotional comfort, right? Knowing that they are, because they're in a truck with the most safety features, fully filled, fully spec, that they are more likely to make it home to their family safely. That's an emotional comfort thing. And, and when most mini drivers step into a truck, they want to know that. Right now, for sure. And that's a really good point. You had that, uh, Volvo had that great video, maybe it was last year where you brought the, was it a chiropractor or a doctor or something in with the drivers and just the sound. I just want to, I just <laughs> want to applaud the sound engineer, whoever was on that video, because it made my skin crawl to like feel, you know, you kind of go like this, like, yeah, I know I get that. So every uh, time I watch it, oh, <laughs> when, it, when it, it pops, Do Dr. Bo, I believe his name was. That's right. That's right. I'll have to, I'll link that in the story. Would you, would you go cool see Dr. Bo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I could use him right now. This chair that I got for my home office was a, it was a it was a too quick of a purchase I think because I'm not I'm not so sure of its comfort level. No, I've learned my chairs <laughs> at home are not as comfortable as I think. Right. But, but, all right. So so that makes me think of something else. Seats. seats. Oh right. Oh my gosh. Think so. These drivers think we're sitting in our seats here maybe eight hours a day, right? And we're like, oh, this is terrible. Those drivers, they're sitting in their seats eleven hours a day with like a pretty. Right. And now with some of the exemptions, probably even longer try and get the supplies to where they need to go. Right, good point. So having a, you know, a comfortable seat is very important. I um, mean, also being able to adjust that seat to where it needs to be for them to be able to see the road and feel comfortable, to be able to adjust the steering wheel so they're in their, their best body position. All of that is, is extremely important and, and plays into the driver comforts. And that's like the, the basics of driver comfort right there. Right. No, and I mean, going back to an earlier point you made too about how it's been a long-term trend for fleets to spec some driver comfort features as a retention recruitment plan. But man, I guess I just never, you know, and we saw it too. We saw it even tracking it on and writing about it on fleet equipment. But just to think about it now, I didn't, I didn't realize that, the, you know, they, some drivers might be ordered to eat in the cabs, right, to kind of do that, that social distancing stuff. So yeah. man, holy smokes, those investments are paying off quite a bit. Are, are absolutely paying off. Yeah. What is it? I think I've seen certain certain states or hey, you, you can only carry out or, or something like that or pick up. And right. Yep. That's us in Ohio. And, sure. and I can't imagine how complicated it is for them. Each state as they're driving through the states might have different uh, rules right now going on. And, and how do you keep up with that as well? The drivers are really uh, working really hard and <laughs> in the heart of our, uh, the heart of our nation. I know. Holy smokes. I know. Uh, well, and, and then in that regard too, um, not only is cleaning and, and safety and comfort important, but upkeep service, making sure that everything works, right? There's nothing more annoying than like a window control that won't go down when you want it to, or like, you know, the little the outlet that won't work when you're laying in the bunk. So what are, what are the top when the, if you're rolling a truck in for, for a preventive maintenance, or maybe it's just in the shop for a different issue, what are some of those creature comfort checkpoints that the, the shops should make sure they're taking care of to keep the drivers happy? Yeah, that's a really good question because I, I definitely would get frustrated if the window wouldn't go down. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, one that's a really uh, important one that's good for creature com comfort and just business is whether the electrical, like the 12 volt, the USB, those ports uh, need to really work because it's not just, oh yeah, I want to plug something in. It's, I need to plug something in so I can power it, so I can plan my route, so I can know where I'm going, I can see the traffic, it's to do their daily jobs, they need that. And then on, on top of that, then when you're sleeping in the cab later, and, and especially right now, they need to be able to see what's going on on the news, talk with their families. So having the, those electric outlets is more important than ever before. And also what we, we often hear is that if something is wrong in a truck, the driver, especially a comfort feature, the drivers will let, let the company know because it's impacting them so much. Um, every day. But another thing that's always good to check, you know, if, if there's a problem with the, the seat adjustments, steering wheel adjustments, all of that, because that's where the driver's spending most of their time day in and day out. Um, another one that we hear is if for some reason, say somehow something manages to get broken in a sleeper, a cabinet latch gets broken or something, uh, and that could rattle. That Could you imagine something rattling for all day long and you can't do anything about it that way that, it would just drive you off the wall so so things like that um are always it can be good to check or, or not to mention it pop over when you go over a bump or some road work and then stuff fall out of the cabinets right and roll everywhere and so th those are some co quick comfort things to check 
along with right now, make sure the refrigerator is, is working and things like that so that they know their food's going to be good. Right. For sure. For sure. Good tips. I have to say, this is completely kind of unrelated, but it reminded me of it, um, that when we were driving the electric VNR about a month or two ago, I was amazed. There was no rattling. We were driving around. I did not hear any rattling. Nicely done, because you get in some electric trucks, and yeah, you know, all those little things that you don't hear with a diesel. Normally, you don't hear it, yeah, because right. engine. That's right. So to your point, if, it, if you are in your diesel truck now, and you can hear it, now you got a real problem. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I say this because I did it once. I had the, the microwave and I had put the glass, the bottom part of the microwave in there. It was in there wrong. Uh, I don't know how it gotten off the track. And so for the next like, several hours, it just rattled and I was just wanted to lose my mind. But because of what I was doing, I, I couldn't pull over. So. Right. Ah. Right. No, then, I mean, there's a safety issue then too. If you're like blaring the music to try to drown it out, and then you can't, you got to hear what's going on around you. So no, really yeah, good point. And it, you know, to your point, it's those small things, but I, I, you know, I think you had mentioned it too, the hours of service exemptions where people are just trying to get the stuff they need to the place where they need it. It, it, make, it can make a huge difference. So really, really wonderful uh, insight. Really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us and, and give us some tips on how to keep them comfortable out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the truckers, I mean, they're, they're the heroes and they're not, they're not recognized enough, especially uh, right now. I mean, with, without them, you know, get the medical, medical supplies, the protective equipment needed, um, and everything would be much, much worse. So they're, you know, they're out there really helping, uh, helping in the best way possible. For so sure. To be recognized. For sure. And even, you know, it's kind of, it's fun for, for us as fleet equipment too, because we're always so focused on the equipment, but people run the equipment, people drive the equipment, people are using the equipment. And I think ever more than ever now, just, just recognizing and, and taking care of the people that do that is, uh, is just as important as operating the, the equipment efficiently, for sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again. And I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Very good.